When a first in human researcher confronts the possibility of failure in the lab, it's not just the research that's at stake. Long days and lost sleep are the norm for the doctors here in Building 10 because they realize that the burden they carry on their shoulders includes both their pursuit of a cure and the fragile hopes and dreams of the patients and their families. This unique responsibility only makes their unceasing commitment to advancing science and medicine all the more extraordinary. Bo Cooper's leukemia continues to ravage his body. Without any treatment, he could soon succumb to his cancer. A week ago, it was a little dicey as to whether we were actually going to have enough cells to give him. It's always a little anxious until I actually see the final numbers. Today, we'll find out for sure. The number you guys will use for the uh, calculation is this one. So it was 1.7? Yeah. Yeah, so you came up with 561 million, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the end, Dr. Fry and his team were able to produce double the dose of CAR T cells. Excellent. So he's going to make the dose. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks great. Thanks, guys. Hi, he met cell dose. So he's going to get the dose that uh, we had hoped to be able to give him in the very beginning. So we got there. I wasn't sure, but we got there. So the good news is I just came back from cell processing. So I looked at the cells. I've been losing sleep just because I wanted to make sure that, you know, we had something to give you. But your cells look fantastic. That's good stuff. So the plan is that uh, they'll give them tomorrow morning. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I hope you feel better. Hopefully. I'm sorry you're feeling so lousy again. Yeah. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, <laughs> We'll get the cells infused tomorrow morning. What makes you feel good. On the other hand, he's the first patient at the higher dose level, so you really never know what's going to happen. It's why it's amazing and courageous that patients actually enroll in clinical trials. Anita McAllister, a metastatic melanoma patient, is about to meet her doctor, Stephanie Goff, for the first time. Nothing that we've done so far has stopped the tumor growth. Even the surgery seven years ago, it was every three months we got to find out that we had another three months to go to find out. It's like holding your breath. Mm -hmm. And you're waiting to exhale, and you're waiting to exhale, and um, then you don't get to exhale. Yeah. Hi, Anita, Stephanie Goff, very Hi. nice to nice meet you. Let oh, me let me just grab a chair. Right. Hi. Stephanie okay. Goff, nice Calister. to meet you. So um, you were initially diagnosed in 2008, mm -hmm. and that was with a lesion on the left temporal. Mm -hmm. And they did the first excision. There mm -hmm. were some positive margins, so they mm -hmm. went back and did it again. Also took your left parotid and mm -hmm. some lymph nodes. So that's what my facial paralysis is from. Unfortunately, about six years later, mm -hmm. something came back. And that's when treatment kind of shifted over to treatments for advanced disease, yes. for metastatic. That failed to keep things under control. Mm -hmm. So I know that Dr. Malexa has talked to you a little bit about what we do. When we give the treatment itself to patients with metastatic melanoma, we can cause shrinkage of their tumors about half the time. Okay. And we can make them all go away about a quarter of the time. And that's obviously what we're hoping right. for for you. Okay. All of it starts with an operation. We'll take out the tumors that are our targets. They immediately go off to the lab mm -hmm. where they start getting processed. Okay. The experimental immunotherapy Anita McAllister will receive will attempt to extract the immune cells inside her tumors and grow them in the lab into the billions so that they can then fight her cancer. I've just spit a whole lot of stuff at you. So now it's your turn to ask questions. You said 50-50 effectiveness for, for shrinkage. shrinkage. 
the question is, is there is there a possibility that there's sort of faster growth coming out of this? Is it if I had a crystal ball and could tell you how this was going to work, yeah. I could I could give you more reassurances. But that's kind of the statistics from the last 20 years. Right. Using immunotherapy remains controversial. Patients can get very ill. We do have to send patients to the ICU. This still has high risk. It has high benefit, but it also has high risk. And that's why it's still in an experimental setting. Today's the big day. Bo gets CAR T cells. This is the whole reason why we came here, you know. Everything's going to go smooth. Everything's going to work good. Hopefully, Bo looks good when we get in there today, too. eternity to be waiting for this special day. I'm a little nervous. It's hard to see Bo the way that he is, but hopefully this will be the last time he'll ever get leukemia. Well, he's going to get his cells today. Hopefully this will make him feel much better. This is the type of cell product that, you know, we will be infusing into Bo. So what we see here is a CAR T cell that's moving uh, across the field as it seeks out a leukemia cell. And then at the end here, uh, you see it finally interact with the leukemia cell and begin the process of killing that leukemia cell. Each one of these blue CAR T cells has the potential to divide itself exponentially after we infuse them into the patients, you can see this CAR T cell that is essentially splitting into two CAR T cells. So you start with a relatively small army of CAR T cells, and what you end up with is a massive army of CAR T cells, hopefully enough to eradicate the patient's cancer. But whenever you enter a highly experimental clinical trial, you have no idea how it's going to turn out. And the dose that we're going to be giving Bo uh, is, uh, is, is higher than we've given to anybody else. And so, you know, at this point, I'm not quite sure, you know, what that increased dose is going to mean. Mr. Bo Dalton Kilport, date of birth 8-30-1989, OK? We're going to start. Wow. Did you see them follow oh, yourself? Uh, a bit. The cells are going now. The cells are in. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited. Can we get a smile? Come on. Wants to sleep. Oh, no. He's excited inside, I'm yes. sure. <laughs> Hello? Can you do some deep 
folk. Can you breathe a little? Can you breathe, please, honey? I really don't know what's going to happen. The best case scenario is that Bo would enter remission with this treatment. Uh, and we'd be able to eradicate all the leukemia from his bone marrow. The worst case scenario is that he could experience a substantial toxicity, including even the possibility of not surviving. It's an experiment. It's an experiment in Bo's body. Sometimes you're looking for answers, and you just don't know the answers. The clinical trial is that. A clinical trial. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. The hardest part is, how's this really going to pan out?